what's going on guys welcome back to the channel in the last video i finished painting the rear aprons or spats for the evo it was kind of my first go at painting with a compressor and actual gun set up instead of rattle cans everything turned out really really well with them so i am finally excited to paint the front lip this piece is a little bit bigger than the rear aprons but hopefully it turns out just as good stay tuned <laughs> everything that I finished up with in the last video. So here are the rear aprons. They came out awesome. I still do need to do some wet sanding because they have a few little dirt and dust nibs in there. In the last video, I didn't get to go over a lot of the actual painting process because I had to set up the air compressor so that all of the air was clean and dry. For this video, I'm going to focus more on the painting and the gun setup and all of that stuff. But here's what I've got and it actually worked out perfectly. So I'm just using, it's an eight gallon hot dog compressor and for the air filtration. So I've got a little water separator right here. It comes out of and then inside of here is a desiccant dryer. When they are all filled up, they will actually turn to pink, but I was able to paint all of the aprons and they are still pretty much purple. So um, you can get quite a bit of life out of this. And then for added security on the end of the gun, I did another oil water separator here and then another little small desiccant dryer. As far as the air supply goes, I had absolutely zero issues out of this. For the lip, it is a replica. It's not an actual Voltex lip. I did get it off of eBay. Fitment is great. The only issue that I had out of it is there was a little bit of a hump right there. It was much worse than that. It could have been from me actually hanging it up on the refrigerator over there. I had it kind of just laying over the side, so it may have just been a pressure point. I was really frustrated with it when I first unwrapped this thing, but I pulled out the heat gun, just kind of heated up the plastic and molded it back. You can kind of see that little indention right there. So the heat gun actually works great. If you do have a little bump like that, you can heat it up. You have to heat it up really good. It'll make the plastic really soft, and then you can mold it how you need to back to the shape that you want. Like I said, I really wanted to go over over everything more with the paint and the gun in this video because I didn't get to in the last video it was running too long. For the guns though I did use Harbor Freight guns. I went and picked up another purple gun so I ran out of time when I sprayed my primer and I didn't clean the gun right afterwards and this 2k primer hardens on so so well that it was just a pain in the butt trying to clean it with the lacquer thinner so luckily I did it with the cheap gun so I just tossed the other one and went up there and got another one. For my base and clear I was spraying with the Spectrum gun. It's the 1.3 tip so I sprayed both the base and the clear with this gun. I'm gonna go over all of the paint and stuff when I actually do that later on. But for now, I wanna get this purple gun out. If you saw the last video, all of the purple guns, they come with a bunch of oil and stuff all over it. So you have to really break it down and clean it before you use it. So I'm gonna break this thing down, get it cleaned up really good with some lacquer thinner over here. And then I will get it put back together, ready to spray. And then I'll go ahead and get the Spectrum gun put back together and ready to spray as well. Purple gun is all cleaned up. You saw what I did, broke it down completely. I just put it in a little cup of lacquer thinner and then I used some Q-tips to get into the hard to reach areas. 
you have to do this. If you try to use this gun straight out of the box, you can see all of the grime and stuff that's all up in there. But it didn't take long at all, and for a $15, $16 gun, this thing really does work good. Now that the guns are ready to go, I'm going to start prepping up the front lip over here. To prep and scuff the surface of the plastic, I've got these gray automotive scuff pads. If you saw my last video, I said you can get any color of these. They come in different colors. Each color is equivalent to a different grit of sandpaper. I believe the gray is 800 grit. Like I said earlier, there is a couple of little wavy sections in there right there. It's not near as bad as it was, but the heat gun is working really good. So I am going to do that a little bit more. I'm going to try to flatten that out just a little bit more. And then once I've got this thing flattened out nicely, I will go ahead and start getting it all scuffed up. front lip is all prepped up and ready to go so I was able to heat this thing up really nice and get it flat like I wanted it to be and then I used my gray scuff pad to get everything all scuffed up to be prepared for the adhesive promoter and primer. Now that I've got the front lip all prepped up and ready to go I want to get the garage masked off and ready for paint. This is what I use it's a tape and drape I think the actual brand is called like plasma mat or something like that but I get it on Amazon. You can get it in different links I did actually have this up already when I painted the rear aprons but I had it up for a couple of weeks because I had to take different days to paint and over time as you open and close the garage door it just eventually tears it up a little too much. This is a nine foot length. My garage is, has an eight foot ceiling so it gives me just an extra foot. I wish I actually would have gotten a couple of extra feet maybe 10 or 11 just to have a little bit of room to put something on top of it to hold it down but either way I'm going to go ahead and get this hung up. garage is all masked off here. I did have to add another little section here. For some reason on this side, it just wasn't long enough. I think it's because how the garage door has to open up just a little bit so that I can put my fan over here. Front lip is also ready to go. I ended up putting it on top of an old subwoofer box. This is the sub box that I had in the Focus ST when I had it. And for my primer, this is the primer that I'm going to be using. It's this Proform. It is a 2K primer, so it does require a hardener. You can actually mix this four to one and create a high build primer or you can add reducer in there to thin it out just a little bit. It says for a medium build you use four parts primer, one part hardener, and then one part reducer which is what I did when I painted the aprons. And then before the primer goes on I do have this adhesion promoter for the plastic. This Bulldog by Clean Strip seems to be the most popular brand. They come in an aerosol can. You can actually get it to spray out of the gun as well. But the aerosol can actually sprays in a nice big fan pattern so it sprays really well so that's what I went with. So what I'm going to do is get my soapy water right here and then just my regular water. I'm going to clean the front lip off really good with some soapy water and then I've also got some isopropyl alcohol in here as a degreaser so I'll spray that all over it as well and and then wipe it off and then I will hit it with the adhesion promoter and then I'll mix up my primer and spray that.
It's the next day. I finished getting all of the primer on the front lip yesterday. I did want to go over the gun settings with you guys. Settings for both guns are pretty much the exact same. I'm going to get this one put back together really quick and then I will show you how I set it up for spraying. Purple gun is all put back together, so I'm going to show you how I set it up to spray with. Again, I'm not a professional. This is just what I have learned to be correct. So down here, this is the air control. I set everything with the regulator, so for this one, I just keep it all the way open. Up top, this is the fluid control. So what I have learned to be correct is you depress the trigger. You want to screw it all the way in until you meet resistance. So about right there. And then so that should be the most fluid coming out when I depress the trigger. So what I'm going to do is just back it off just like a quarter or a half a turn. And then I'll lock it in with the little lock collar here. The last adjustment is the fan control knob. So what I do is I open the fan all the way up. And then I do a few test sprays. So you can see kind of here, this is what I used for it yesterday. You can see with the fan all the way open, this is what it's going to look like. And then with the fan all the way closed, you just get a straight shot. But what I do is I open the fan up all the way. I do a little test shot and then I'll start to just kind of turn it. Do another test shot until I get the pattern that I like. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on sanding the lip over here. I wanna get this smooth if I can, as smooth as I can get it. And there's a couple of little dimples right there that I want to try to sand smooth. I will probably go over the entire lip just lightly with like some 400 to 600 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'll get it cleaned up with some soapy water and some degreaser, and then I will get this base coat on here. Base coat is completely laid down. Everything went on super smooth, no issues at all. Just like the primer first coat, I lay on super, super thin. I just kind of sprinkle it on, wait for it to get tacky, you know, let it flash, and then I can start laying on the heavier coats. For the base coat, I did a total of three coats. So the first one, like I said, was just a very light coat to sprinkle it on. Then I do kind of a medium wet coat, and then the last coat I do really wet and heavy. But everything came out really, really good. You can see down here where I sanded that one little spot smooth, and those two little small dimples over here are completely gone now. I went ahead and got the gun all cleaned up and ready to go for the clear coat. I am not going to be spraying the clear coat today. I don't have enough time to get the clear on today, so I will probably do that either tomorrow or possibly the next day. For the paint on the base coat, this is what I'm using. It's this brand called Matrix. I just had this mixed up at the local paint shop, and then it uses the same reducer that I used in the primer. For the base coat, it just mixes one to one. So half base coat, half reducer, and then you're ready to spray. But I've got everything ready to go to spray the clear coat. So here in a day or two, I will catch back up with you guys and get the clear coat on here. It's the next day. I finished doing the base coat yesterday. I've already got everything ready to go to spray the clear coat. Here is the clear that I'm going to be using. It's made by Gentech. It's actually called Kick-Ass Clear. I think that's a pretty cool name. And then here is the hardener for it. So for the clear, you don't actually need any reducer. It's just four parts of clear to one part hardener. I'm gonna get the gun put back together and then get the clear mixed up and start spraying.
Just finished up cleaning up the gun after spraying the clear. Everything came out really, really well. However, clear with clear, it always happens, but I can never keep from getting runs. It's mainly due to the fact that I don't have any light in here, so the only light that I have is coming from the outside right out here. But everything actually looks really good. I can sand those runs out later on, but I'll show you where they're all at. So here's one right here. The rest of it came out really, really good all the way around. I got a really long run right there. And here is the worst one of all. So I have actually never had a run this bad, but no big deal, I'll be able to sand all of this out. Just like with the rear aprons, I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then tomorrow I will come out here and do a little test fit mock-up on the car so you can see what it looks like. It's been a couple of days. I took all of the tape and drape down. I just wanted to show you one last little look at the lip before I do a little test fit. As far as the actual painting goes, I'm super stoked with how everything came out. I showed you I had a few runs, but that's no big deal. I can definitely get those sanded out. These edges that I could see really well with the light, they came out really, really nice. I showed you already, but here's the runs again. So this one right here, very, very small. There's one over here on this side. It does go all the way down but it's still fairly small and then this one right here is just awful looking i had no light on this side i couldn't even see the run until i had actually finished painting so although it does suck i can get it out it's just going to take some time and some elbow grease the worst part about the lip in my opinion is this little area right here so this is where it was bent out and i was trying to use my heat gun to mold it back but it looks like it left a permanent little wave in here which if you stand back from a distance you can definitely see that so I'm really hoping that I can figure something out to do with that. But I'm not going to do anything else in this video. I do want to get this thing test fitted on the car. I just kind of want to see how it looks. Front lip is on. Fitment is awesome. Color match with the whites turned out really, really nice. Everything seems to match up really well and i was so worried about this but to be honest with you you do see it when you're up close but from a distance that little wave is not very noticeable i can still go back over it with my heat gun but i'm afraid that having all of the paint on there now is just going to probably bring it back to the same form but this actually doesn't look near as bad as what i thought it was going to but overall extremely extremely stoked with how this thing came out i love how the color came out i love how this lip looks on this car in the next video i will get everything sanded down i'll get all of those runs sanded out and then back here in the trunk i've got the rear aprons that still need to have some wet sanding done so hopefully in the next video I can get the front lip and the rear aprons all sanded down and then fully installed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If this helped you out with your paint job at all, definitely hit that like button. If you want to see more going on with the Evo, if you want to see all the wet sanding done and see these things fully installed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time.